Hello. I'm really excited that you've joined me for this series of lessons where we will explore the important scientific concepts of work, power and energy. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on the concept of work. When you hear the word work, what do you think about? Your dad working late at the office. Piles of homework. Working at the pizza place for extra cash to spend during the holidays. Your mum hanging out the clothes on washing day. Or perhaps helping your cousin move into a new flat. You see, work is one of those words that we use all the time in everyday conversation and it means different things to different people. But the concept of work has a very precise meaning when used in physics. So let's find out what work really is, scientifically speaking. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the work done on an object by a force. Calculate the work done by an object when a force is applied at an angle. Give examples of when an applied force does work on an object and give examples of when an applied force does not do work on an object. Before we get started, I'm going to get Chad online. He emailed me a couple of questions that he had about work and I think he will enjoy our lessons. Hello, Miss Rosie. Thank you for inviting me to join your lessons on work, energy and power. Have I missed anything? Not at all. We are about to begin our investigation into the scientific view of work. Great. I'm sure you remember from previous grades that a force is a push or a pull of an object. Sure, I remember that. Now, in physical sciences, we say that work is done when a force moves an object. So, to scientifically define work, we say that work is the product of the force applied to an object and the distance that the object travels parallel to that force. Look at this graphic that illustrates the definition. Here we see an object that moves from point A to point B. It moves in the same direction as the force applied to it. Work occurs between A and B. When an object moves across a distance, we say it has changed position. This is also known as displacement. What do you think the definition tells us about work? Well, as far as I can see, for work to be done, there must be one, a force, and two, an object that moves in the direction of the force applied. That's right. The amount of work done depends on two things. The distance moved in meters and the force applied in newton. To calculate work, we can use the formula work equals force times displacement. In this equation, F is the magnitude of the force acting on the object measured in the unit newton and displacement is the magnitude of the movement of the object and is measured in the unit meters. What do you think the unit for work would be? Well, if we look at the units in the equation, the answer would be newton meters. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. However, scientists refer to this combination of SI units as a joule. So one newton meter is one joule. The unit for work is the joule. Now, let's try to calculate work using this formula. I'm going to use this trolley to show the action of someone pulling a loaded cart. When I pull this trolley horizontally across a table, I'm exerting force, a pull force, in the same direction as the movement of the trolley. The force is in this direction and the trolley moves in the same direction. The pull force exerted on the trolley pulled the trolley across the table in the same direction as the force and displaced the trolley from here to here. The force used to pull the cart is 5 Newton and the cart is displaced 3 meters. We can now calculate work using the formula work equals force times displacement. This means that the net work is 5 Newton multiplied by 3 meters, which gives the total amount of work done as 15 Newton meters. 
but remember that the unit for work is joule. So the final answer is 15 joule. There is something very important I want you to take note of here. For the formula work is equal to force times displacement to apply, the direction of the force on the trolley must be in the same direction as the direction in which the trolley moves. Right, let's do another calculation to make sure we've got the hang of it. Say that the force I exerted on the trolley was 100 Newton and it moved a distance of 40 meters. Can you calculate the work done? So, Chad, have you tried this calculation? Of course. The force exerted was 100 Newton and the trolley moved 40 meters, so it must be 4,000 Newton meters. No, wait, 4,000 Joule. Excellent work. I hope you guys got the same answer. Now, I would like you to look at the following images and think about whether work is done in these examples. Do you think work is done when a batsman hits a cricket ball? Or when a soccer player kicks a ball towards the goal? Well, yes, I think so. That's right. Work is done in both these examples when a batsman accelerates a ball to a high velocity by exerting a force on it and when a soccer player hits a ball towards the goals. Work is done by the batsman and the soccer player because the force is in the same direction as the direction of the movement of the ball. The type of work we saw in these examples is linked to kinetic energy and we will look at it more closely in our lesson on energy. Now, what do you think happens if the force applied to an object does not have the same line of action as the resulting displacement of the object? Here is an example of what I'm talking about. This man is pulling a heavy box from an angle above the box, making the box move horizontally. Here, work is done, but the direction of the force is not the same as the direction of the displacement. In this example, we must first calculate the component or portion of the force which acted in the direction of the movement. Let's look at the formula we used to do this. In this case, we define work as the product of the component of the force in the direction of the motion and the distance through which it acts. So work is equal to the force times displacement times cosine theta. Theta is the angle between F and X. Let's use this formula to calculate the work done in our example. Say the pull force on the crate was 500 Newton at an angle of 60 degrees over a distance of 5 meters. Substituting these values into the equation, we get 500 Newton times 5 meters times cosine 60 degrees. This gives us an answer of 1,250 Joule. That means the work done on the crate was 1,250 Joule. Right, I think it's time for you to try another example on your own. A shopper in a supermarket pushes a trolley with a force of 35 Newton directed at an angle of 25 degrees downward from the horizontal. Find the work done by the shopper as she moves down a 50 meter aisle. The answer to this problem is 1,586 Joule. Did you get that, Chad? Yes, I did. Good. I want to ask you another question. Does the word scalar sound familiar to you? Um. Isn't a scalar something that only has magnitude and no direction? That's right. Now, mathematically, work is the scalar product of force and displacement. A scalar quantity in physics is a quantity with magnitude only, not direction. The product of two vectors always produces a scalar quantity. Okay, let's do a quick recap. We know that work is the product of two vectors, force and displacement. 
it is a scalar quantity and the unit of work is joule. So one joule is the work done when a force of one newton moves an object a distance of one meter in the same direction as the force. It is important to note that the calculations we have looked at so far are all examples of positive work. Positive work is done when the force and displacement are in the same direction. Positive work can be defined mathematically as work done when theta is greater than or equal to zero, but less than 90 degrees. Now, I want you to have a look at another example. Here, a woman is carrying her groceries to her home. Do you think there is any work done in this situation? Chad, what do you think? Well, there is a force acting on the bag and the bag is moving, so yes, I think there is work being done. That does seem to be the logical conclusion, doesn't it? But unfortunately, that is not the correct answer. In this example, the force acting on the bag, labelled FP, is perpendicular. In other words, at a 90 degree angle to the displacement of the bag. If we use the work equation force times displacement times cosine theta and substitute theta with 90 degrees, we see that cosine 90 degrees is zero. So, where the force is perpendicular to the displacement, we will always multiply by zero and the answer will always be zero. In other words, no work is done. Wow, I must remember that. Yes, it is important to remember this rule. Now, the final thing I want us to look at in this lesson is work done against gravity. When an object with a mass, M, is lifted from ground level to a height, H, above the ground, we express this in the following equation. Work equals force times displacement times cos theta. In this example, the lifting force is equal to the gravitational force or weight of the object. We know that to calculate gravitational force, we use the equation force equals mass times gravitational acceleration. So the work equation we use is mass times gravitational acceleration times displacement. Displacement is the height the books were lifted. Now, what about theta? Remember, theta is the angle between the lifting force and the direction of displacement. Here, the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement are the same. The angle theta is zero degrees. So, when work is done against gravity, work is calculated using mass times gravitational acceleration times displacement times cos of zero degrees. Remember, cos of zero degrees is one. Let's apply this equation to a physics problem. Let's see how much work Bill will do when he lifts a book from the floor to the top of a table. How much work will Bill do when he lifts a book with a mass of 500 grams to the top of a table that is one meter above the floor? Here is a diagram of our problem. To find the work done on the book, we will use the equation work done equals mass times gravitational acceleration times delta times cos theta. Remember, 500 grams converts to 0, 0,5 kilograms. When we substitute all the given values into the equation, we get work equal to 0, 0,5 times 9,8 times 1 times 1. We find that the work done by Bill is 4,9 joule. Oh good, I got the same answer. Other examples of work against gravity are lifting heavy weights, climbing stairs and lifting bricks to build a wall. That was great. Thanks for having me join your lesson today, Miss Rosie. But I have to go, my mom's calling me to dinner. But I'll see you again soon. I hope that you are also enthusiastic about what we've learned today. Here is a task for you to practice your skills. But be careful, the last question is a bit tricky.
Decide whether or not work is done in the following situations. Give reasons for your answers. 1. Max pushes against a wall and becomes tired. 2. A book falls off a table and free falls to the ground. 3. A rocket accelerates through space. 4. A waiter holds a tray full of meals above his head with one arm and carries it straight across the room at a constant speed. Remember, for work to be done, a force must be applied in the direction of motion and there must be displacement. For more information, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.